And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Quirkle is a classic game that came out in 2006, and last year they came out with a special 10th anniversary edition of Quirkle. Quirkle is a game that has been extremely popular. It's been described, maybe by me, I'm not sure, as Scrabble with shapes and colors. So this is a simple game that's easy for a lot of people to get into. We're going to be taking a look here at the 10th Anniversary Edition, but if you've never heard of it before, that's fine. I'm going to show you how to play. Quirkle is made up of a bag of tiles, thick black tiles. There are... Uh, 36 different combos. There are six shapes and six colors. So for example, uh, there are six different red tiles uh, in this, one of each of the shapes. There are six different circles, one of each of the colors. So there's 36 tiles and there's four of each instance of each tile. So there's a total of 108 tiles. Each player is going to draw tiles and have a little tray here that holds them in front of them. One person goes first and then play begins. Now the person's turn, they can play one or more tiles. So let's say the player before me has played a yellow circle. Now on my turn, I'm going to score points by placing tiles. And I'm going to do this uh, by either playing all one or more tiles, but all the tiles I have to play have to either be the same color or the same shape. So here, for example, yellow is the best way to match this. So I could play both of these and put them in a line like this next to the yellow. This is going to score me three points. On a future turn, maybe I could do something like this here, putting the same shape next to each other. Again, this is going to score me three points. So when I'm done, I'm going to be drawing more tiles from the bag. Now, each row and or column must be all the same color and, all, and or all the same shape. I'm sorry, not and or, or all the same shape. So, for example, the only tile that can go here is... Well, it could be yellow. A yellow star could go here because that would keep the star row going this way and would keep the yellow row going this way. Or it could be a purple clover leaf because this one could be purple and that could be a clover leaf. But let's say I did put a yellow star there. Well, then this one here would, it, it would get more complicated as you put different things down. You're not always going to be able to finish an entire row or column. You also, let's say, for example, this row here has a blue circle in it. I can't add another blue circle to that row, but I can add the other four circles as time goes by. So you can see here that I have one of each color, and this is the biggest any row or column can get. And in fact, when you do this, you're going to get a bonus of six extra points. So if I put the last orange tile on this, I'm going to get six bonus points. In fact, you can score two things at one time. You're only allowed to add to one row or one column, but if it's my turn and I happen to have these three blue tiles, I could go one, two, three. So you can see that I'm forming a row here as I play these, but the column is also gonna score. So here I get 12, six plus the bonus of six, and then I would get three. So that would be a score of 15. Now players can discard tiles from in front of them and redraw new ones from the bag if they can't or don't want to play. And slowly over time, this is going to form different rows and columns. Sometimes something will be impossible to finish because let's say, for example, you have this, the only one left there could be red and perhaps there's a blue row here that's next to it for some reason. Well, I can't put a red here because it doesn't match the blue row, but I might be able to put the red at the top. But sometimes it's not possible to get the sixth row. So players are trying to get as many points as they possibly can. They're going to be drawing back from the bag. When all the tiles in the bag are gone, players will continue playing tiles from their, from their tray in front of them. The first person to run out of tiles gets a bonus six points. Players will then check their scores. You'll be keeping track of how many points you get each turn on the score pad that's included with the game. And whoever has the most points is the winner. 
first of all, you can get Quirkle for a very inexpensive price. There's some spin-offs of Quirkle too, which are okay. The original game is the best, but the 10th anniversary edition is really nice. The tiles are really nice and thick. They've always been nice and thick, but the bag, the trays especially, this one even comes with a Quirkle pencil. Woo! Um, all right, whatever. And it comes with a score pad. I'm not sure the original one came with a score pad. It doesn't matter. This is a great gateway game. For me, it's a little bit like, nah, I like it. I don't love it. But a lot of people really do enjoy this. And this is the kind of a game that I bet someday you're going to see in like retirement homes, people playing it. I don't mean that as a negative thing, but I think the idea of sitting there and matching tiles, people play Scrabble over and over and over again. People like the idea of playing Scrabble, putting these words out and forming rows and columns with them. The problem is Scrabble definitely uh, is better for those who have a large vocabulary. And by large vocabulary, I mean they memorize the 52 or whatever two-letter words that are in Scrabble and things like that, which isn't really that fun if you don't want to put that kind of effort into the game. This game offers that same sort of choice, but you don't have to be a brainiac or someone who's memorized a lot of words. Here, you're simply placing tiles out. You gotta be careful. Sometimes you're like, man, I really want five points. I can make that line go to five, but I might be possibly setting someone else up to get a sixth in that one. And you gotta be careful because poor play can help enable the person who goes after you. Uh, but the game does scale really well. It's two to four players, works well with all those counts. I like it with two. You're going back and forth playing it. Feels a little bit more strategic because with four, you're not sure how things are gonna be when it comes around. You're trying to save tiles in front of you when you have the six tiles so you can have a whole bunch of one color. Um, you're trying to set it up so that you can score a row and a column at the same time. But even though you're doing all that, the game itself is still an easy, simple one to get into. This is the 10th anniversary of Quirkle. There's a reason for that. It stood the test of time. It has won awards. It's just a game that, you know, when you play it, you're like, wow, that's how you do it. You put these tiles out, you get points. It's a game, I think, that should be sold in all mass market stores, and in fact, is sold in some of them. And if you've never played it, it's worth giving a try. Sure, there's heavier strategic games, and for me, this one is more of an entertaining pastime, but it's also one that if I'm going to give someone a gift of a board game, this is one of the top ones that I would consider, and this 10th anniversary edition is really nice. That's Quirkle. Dice Tower Judgment approved! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Boop. Boop.